salut. Euh, je m'appelle Roberto Carlos Arredondo Espinosa. Euh, je suis 33 années. <rire> Et, euh, je suis mexicain aussi. Et, nous ici, profitez de la bière. <rire> Après le lycée, euh, j'ai commencé le master, euh, je change de ville pour le sur mer, euh, une ville qui s'appelle Ensenada. Donc c'est très à côté de le, de le border avec les états unis et le Mexique. Donc j'ai commencé le master ici et, et pour le PhD, j'ai changé de ville pour une autre euh, euh, research center euh, qui c'est le sud Californie. I started the PhD uh, project in 2016 and I finished it in 2021. So it was around five years of uh, studies in this project. And then once I finished, I stayed in La Paz, is the place in the South Baja California state that I realized this uh, PhD project. And I stayed in there for a couple months working directly with the enterprise. We were developing all this information. After that, I moved to Ensenada again, so I came back to the place of the masters to develop a short uh, stay of a postdoc. So in December 2021, I finished this little stay to be ready to come in France, all the pieces together to arrive here the 31 de mars. <laughs> Differentially expressed genes regulated by methylation in the Pacific oyster, Crassus tree I guess. At the PhD thesis, we worked uh, together with a private enterprise that was dedicated in the production of the Pacific oyster. So uh, they were interested to have new broodstock that could be resistant to the increases of temperature during summer. So for this context, we needed to take all the families developed in this, uh, for this enterprise and uh, test them with a heat challenge. So this was uh, elaborated in the laboratory in a little chamber, like uh, 40 Celsius degrees inside to expose like uh, an acute uh, ch thermal challenge with them. So for me, it was one of the most uh, valuable experiments because uh, we needed to monitor uh, the death oysters hour by hour. So it was normally planted for 96 hours. So this many was the most important because it was hard and it was the base of all the project. For this, uh, some uh, mini results that we had, it's um, the description or the list from the differences between the heat resistant phenotypes than the heat susceptible ones. So with this information, uh, it could be used for developing of different markers or bio, bio mark markers to try to guide the broodstock selection in a good way considering the heat resistance phenotype of that. So the next generations uh, should have this particularity. So for the enterprise this is very good because they will be sure that the next uh, generations, of produ generations of production will be success. The development of um, new strategies to help people, for example, and in different ways, like uh, food production uh, or even trying to have a clue for some methodologies for meds, for example. Okay, well, one of the, the particularities that put my attention here, it was the epigenetic stuff. In epigenomics, you can see uh, different stuff about the inheritance for the next generations, right? Uh, we have the two currents of thinking, like the Darwinism and Lamarckism. About Darwinism is the survival of the more, the most uh, good for survival, natural selection of the species. Uh, and the Lamarckism, it's about the environment that makes them change, that the environment makes the first pressure for species selection, right? So in epigenomics, we can see both because uh, we are considering all the genomic stuff plus the pressure of the environment. So uh, the external um, variations and the internal uh, machinery that will be together being studied in the epigenomics. That's why I was very interested in this field. <laughs> Because during the PhD project, we used some epigenetic tools to make the differences, even in, in these phenotypes, you know? 
So uh, the epigenetic regulation lies uh, for us in the methylation of uh, nucleic acids like RNA, like DNA, all the information we have inside all the cells. And, um, and here it was with other point of view because it was not related only with gene expression. It is more related with the structure of the chromatin. It's like a huge architecture to see all the regulations of gene expression. We wanted to observe how is the mechanism uh, for the developing of all of those different conformations of the chromatin to have an access to the expression of those genes, you know. So this was the subject that took my attention uh, and that's why I pointed with my finger like go France, go France. So that's why I arrived here and I think we have to restart this again because I fucking lost. I almost finished it. <laughs> continuing with this developing of new technologies for helping the food production, specifically the seafood production. I think uh, maybe if, if you can hear it, there is someone crying because when I arrived to the bar, I asked it only one beer. So that's, that's why they are crying now. <laughs> so this is very particular because this is the best part. I'm getting drunk, you know. <laughs> So well, my favorite drink, well, I'm gonna say it in here in Kong, uh, I have two. For example, the Vedet IPA and the Calva. Jembo Kule Calva. Passion de tout mon vie, je pense que c'est le basketball. Oui, tu sais, je suis très petit, donc... Ça va. <rire> j'aime beaucoup le basket, j'aime beaucoup le sport général, mais équipe avec les équipes de sport. Normalement, euh, volleyball, tout, euh, basketball, football, and um, some uh, physics stuff like um, comment est-ce que c'est les musculation. musculation, but uh, musculation comme ça. <rire> On appelle ça le oui. coup. Mais pour le... Comment est-ce qu'il s'appelle en français Le coup. Le coup, ok. Pour le... Exercise. Pour le coup, yeah, c'est comme ça. <laughs> It is very impressive uh, when... Uh, we are arriving the questions about what do you think about Mexico, for example. They think that it's very uh, hot place, you know? But in my town, for example, as I said, I'm coming from Cananea in the nor in mountains in the northwest. It's like uh, snowing uh, every winter and it's very cold, you know. And for me, sharing the culture from Mexico, it's very, well, at least kind of important because it's not only a hot country. Uh, and you could go for the Aztec story, all the origins of the Mexican uh, population story uh, about the Day of the Dead people, you know. And it's very different how um, could be celebrated in different parts of Mexico, you know. Because one of the most famous in there it's in, in Michoacan state, specifically in, in Janitzio. I never been there, but they have very nice, beautiful images. I think the movie of Coco has the good approach on the explanation of this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, well, in music, that there are two groups. One, one of those, it's very funny because this guy is like a little bit crazy and it's called Simpson Huevo, so it's like <laughs> it's, a, it's like a rapper and has like nice songs, you know. Escondida entre la montaña, las morritas, las machulas y cierto compa me extraña Es un buen día, ando de buena, se me nota And the other one, uh, the group is called Nunca Jamás because these, these guys um, were, were mixing the Northwest culture, like the agropecuarium stuff, with rock. So it's called like the, the agropecuarium rock, you know? It's like, bam, <laughs> banging on. <laughs> you know what, since I was a child, I was uh, more interesting about the white tiger. <laughs> yeah, I think since that moment the white tiger became the, the totem for me. Since I'm writing here, I think Kong has become for me in, in my own dictionary a synonym of friendly, you know, because I, I met here very nice persons and uh, 
the, the development of all the sports and everything had been very, very nice. And the cultural stuff too, because even you really know in our laboratory we have people from different countries and it's amazing to share that too. And uh, specifically, even if the interview was mostly in English, I started to learn more French in the laboratory and uh, I think I just could finish saying thank you to everybody. <laughs> And even I could say it even in Spanish. Gracias a todos, cabrones. <laughs>